Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for coming. This is an exciting event for uh, Bristol Community College uh, uh, and the Fall River Commission on Disabilities. Um, we uh, are very happy to uh, uh, celebrate a great gift to the college uh, that further strengthens the services that uh, we offer uh, to our students and to the community. You know, in the recent, uh, I'm going to say the last decade or so, the number of students and employees who have come uh, to Bristol Community College um, uh, requiring uh, services from our Office of Disability Service has grown, uh, I'm going to say exponentially. We're up to uh, uh, over 900 now that have, and those are only uh, the self-identified uh, uh, people uh, as opposed to others. So uh, it's, uh, I, I welcome that as part of our commitment to uh, diversity and uh, celebrate uh, uh, inclus inclusivity uh, at the college. Uh, and it is a, it is a uh, very much a, a strategic plan uh, uh, for me and for Bristol Community College. Uh, so I'm happy to announce that the um, Fall River Commission on Disabilities has provided us with a $6,000 donation uh, to enable us to purchase two evacuation chairs to help those with limited mobility to get within a building, a different place, or outside of the building entirely, uh, exit the building. And we'll be demonstrating one of those uh, chairs in just a moment, so you'll be able to see how, how uh, effective it is, they are. I often say, as you've heard me many times say, community is our middle name. Uh, and this gift is uh, one of the many ways that, is, uh, that this is illustrated. The Fall River Commission on Disabilities uh, met a very substantial need at our college to help us address uh, our preparedness plan as well as supporting our college goal this year to further strengthen the services that we uh, that for disabled members of our community. Uh, so far in the academic year the college has made substantial physical and programmatic changes uh, this year and last year in response to the uh, our college goal and my personal goal to support all members of our college community uh, with disabilities. We, for example, replaced an elevator in the Commonwealth College uh, building uh, and uh, also improved access to the college bookstore and also uh, a, wheel lift, uh, uh, a wheelchair lift installation in our uh, television studio services, uh, as well as software and hardware uh, to uh, support students in their work. We also uh, relocated uh, the Office of Dil Disability Service. When I first got here, it always struck me that uh, uh, the Office of Disability Service was on the second floor, uh, and uh, I always wondered about the access uh, there. Of course, we did have elevator, but uh, so we relocated the Office of Disability Services to the first floor in another building and put them together so they were a little spread out. Uh, and I think it's much more effective. I know they're, they're happier about that change. Uh, and it and strengthens our services as well. Um, uh, at BCC, access is a critical value for us. Uh, and uh, we, uh, it's central to our mission, as I mentioned. And I thank uh, the commission for generosity. Uh, it's just tremendous that uh, you're going to hear from the commissioner as well, uh, but uh, someone from the commission. But I, I did want to now introduce to you uh, our Dean of uh, Disability Services, uh, Susan Bosino, who will uh, 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 offer some remarks, and then I'll be back to introduce uh, uh, our, our commission speaker. Dean Bosino. Thank you all for being here. And I wanted to say special thanks to Peg Amarantes and Dennis Poselli, who on behalf of the commission invited us, Disability Services last spring, to present a wish list of our many disability needs. So we had a very long list, as you know. Um, and like so many community colleges with the most diverse student and community population, our list was very long, ranging from, at the top of the list, was increased funding for ASL interpreters and C-print captionists for our growing community of deaf and hard of hearing students. We also put tutoring right up there because we depend heavily on tutoring. We looked at coach mentors for our students who fall within the autism spectrum, another population that has increased dramatically. 
Um, we were looking for newer technologies for our blind and visu visually challenged students. And the evacuation chairs were there as well. Um, Cindy Poor Pariso, who's here today in our disabilities coordinator, really did all the hard work in terms of research and pricing along with Wayne Wood, our director of campus security. And the decision from the commission was to donate an amount to purchase two of the chairs, which will really support many of our students. We have about approximately 60 students each semester who say, I will need assistance during an emergency. Um, it, these chairs are also wonderful and essential for community members who visit the campus for theatrical productions, open lectures, and events such as student awards evening. There are many types of evacuation chairs. This model, EvacuTrack, is considered top of the line, and the preferred technology for both education and the corporate sector. Bristol Community College joins, now joins the company of many colleges and universities, such as San Diego State, Cincinnati State University, Mount Holyoke College, as well as Honda, Nissan, and Microsoft, who also have purchased these chairs. Um, it's noted for its portability and ease of use. Only one operator is required, and this chair ensures a seamless exit for an individual, child, or adult with mobility challenges. Um, it's got many, many features. The speed of descent can be controlled easily, and its grip and brake devices also allow for easy descent despite water or other materials on the stairwell. That's very important, as Wayne Wood had pointed out in researching the product. Um, Wayne Wood, our director of campus security and campus expert in emergency preparedness, arranges training and maintenance in all aspects of the chairs. Certainly without the generous donation from the commission, we would not have been able to purchase such exceptional technology. All right, so um, the college now has three chairs, by the way, and we plan to have every building on campus have a chair. Um, so thank you again, and the president will now introduce Dennis Polselli. Uh, thank you, Susan. I should add uh, uh, further munificence from the commission is that uh, there, the $6,000 was more than enough to uh, uh, cover the purchase of the two chairs, which uh, run, I'm going to say, roughly $2,500 each. And with the uh, permission of the uh, commission, uh, we are able to use, I think there's $600 remaining. And uh, uh, with the permission of the commission and, uh, and the great donation that they have made, we're able to further strengthen our services for deaf and hard of hearing uh, services as well. Uh, so uh, there is quite a... Uh, quite a, an array of, uh, of, of services that our Office of Disability Services provides and thanks to the Commission we're able to further strengthen that and we're very grateful. And now um, I think that uh, it is uh, I want to welcome uh, the Vice Chair of the Commission on Disabilities, Dennis Paulselli, who will speak about the Commission's work. But I also also wanted to, men uh, to uh, recognize the Chairman of the Commission, uh, Bill Fontaine. Now, Bill, if you'd raise your hand. and uh, uh, So we're very grateful to have both the Chair and the Vice Chair and other members of the Commission here or are coming. Uh, so I would invite uh, Mr. Polselli, Vice Chair Polselli, to come forward. Uh, and then uh, uh, we'll have a little uh, discussion uh, and then see the demonstration. Mr. Pacelli. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, wow. Thank you, President Sprague, um, and <clears throat> President Sprague and my colleagues on the Fall River Commission on Disability and um, all guests. Can you hear me now? Yes. This is a Verizon commercial. Um, 
First of all, I want to thank the chair of our commission, uh, Mr. William Fontaine, for um, uh, allowing me the opportunity to represent my colleagues on the Commission on Disability um, to, to uh, address this, uh, this gathering. Uh, I want to tell you a little bit about the Fall River Commission on Disability. Um, the commission, um, besides our, our chair, William Fontaine, um, we have Lisa Atkinson. The thing to keep in mind about the commission is that uh, each of our commission, uh, members of our commission are uh, currently working professionals or have retired um, from, um, from holding down in, in positions of responsibility and employment. And the reason why I point this out is because the employment rate among people with disabilities is still a staggering 62 to 70 percent. So this is a unique group of people that are here before you. Um, uh, they, they, they hold down positions of responsibility, um, and to just mention uh, some of what they do uh, briefly, um, our chair, Mr. William Fontaine, is a retired firefighter. Um, Lisa Atkinson is a supervisor for the Massachusetts Rehabilitation Commission's Fall River Office. And the Massachusetts Rehabilitation Commission is a very important state agency that helps and assists persons with disabilities in getting employment. Um, Debbie Pacheco uh, is, uh, is uh, a disability coordinator at Diamond Regional High School um, and, and provides and, and assists students with disabilities in getting the best out of their high school experience. Um, I myself um, am, re am retired for having been disability services coordinator at Framingham State University. And Ken Pacheco, who is not able to be with us today, is the director of community maintenance for the city of Fall River and is, represents the mayor's administration on the commission. The commission is, is composed of nine uh, commissioners. Uh, they are, they, they, the majority of which must be people with dis persons with disabilities, but they can also include uh, a family of an immediate, an immediate family of, of a person with a disability. And there's also uh, an elected or an appointed official uh, appointed by the mayor. So the commission advises the city on enforcement of the Americans with Disabilities Act and state and federal access laws. The commission also uh, assists community organizations um, in, in, in providing services for persons with disabilities. And this is done um, through a disability parking, um, handicap parking enforcement program, uh, which was instituted in July of 2009 to educate the public on why one should not be, be, be parking uh, in places and spots that are designated for persons with disabilities, as well as placard abuses. Um, we have two full-time police officers that, that, um, that are responsible for the enforcement of the disability parking program. And the fines are 200, I almost said $2,000, wow. The fines are $200, $200 um, um, if, you're, if, if someone should park in that area. And we were responding because the common excuse we saw um, before this program took off was, was I'm just going to be a minute, and 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 a minute during that minute, anyone with a disability who wishes to access businesses, stores, work, etc., you know, you're, that that's a spot that's that's a, an accommodation um, for them to go about and participate in all that that life has to offer, and that includes work and and being customers as well. So with that money, we are able to um, support and help with the city's compliance with the ADA, the Americans with Disabilities Act, and we're also able to um, help organizations. In the past, we've helped the City of Fall River's Veteran Service Agents. Um, they have since, um, uh, we provided a handicap ramp exit to the Pine Street Building. We are assisting the Fall River Public Library through our donations. Uh, in reaching out and providing services to persons with disabilities. And of course, right here at Bristol Community College, 
with the back chair that you're about to see demonstrated in a couple of minutes. And as President Sprager pointed out, there was some leftover money to assist with classroom services for students who are deaf and hard of hearing in the form of C-print captioning. So we want to thank Bristol Community College for all that they do every single day to enhance and improve um, students with disabilities access to all that the college experience has to offer, both in the classroom and co-curricular. The co-curricular piece is important because that's the building blocks of resume building that people can put on their experience, on their resume as having been taught some skills and leadership, et cetera. So we really want to thank Bristol Community College for doing that. And in closing, um, I want to thank uh, Dr. Susan Boyston, uh, Dr. Susan Boysenold, who's the Dean, Dr. Cindy Paul Parasol, the Disability Services Coordinator, um, and, and Sally Cameron, Vice President of College Communications, for making this day possible and for all the accommodations that they made today. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Vice Chair Roselli. I, I want to, uh, uh, before we go, we're about to show a demonstration, and I invite you to uh, join us, but I just wanted to be sure there were, uh, or ask if you had any questions. Uh, the, uh, uh, you know, it's a complicated uh, array of services that we provide, and uh, Dennis Palselli uh, explained some of it. He thanked us for doing what we're doing, but uh, I must say that it's not extraordinary. Uh, the, uh, the whole idea of access and service are ingrained in the BCC family, and that's part of our mission. It's something we, uh, you shouldn't be thanking us for doing something that we see as our job. Uh, so I just wanted to open it up uh, if there were any questions before we move forward, but uh, this is a good opportunity while we're here. Question in the back. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, the question was, uh, what is the uh, uh, amount or how many uh, disabled students do we have at uh, BCC? Uh, <clears throat> and the short answer is we don't know, okay, uh, because, uh, I'll clarify that, uh, we don't know because not everyone identifies themselves or registers, uh, I say registers or checks in with our Office of Disability Services. Uh, and those are all personal reasons and respect that, uh, we respect that. But uh, as far as we can tell, we have some over some 900 uh, students uh, with uh, disabilities who have uh, registered or uh, 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 avail themselves of the services of our Office of Disability Services now. Uh, you put that into uh, uh, perspective, uh, we have, I'm going to say 9,000, <coughs> 9,000, <clears throat> Excuse me, 9,000 students, so we have almost 1,000. Uh, uh, Cindy, if you want to add to that? It's about 10% of our population, and that's, that's pretty accurate nationwide. And we've been pretty steady about 10% over the last decade. Yeah. About, yeah, about 10% uh, for those of you who didn't hear Cindy. Uh, uh, as far as uh, uh, the uh, population that will avail themselves of these evacuation chairs, I have limited mobility. Uh, I think uh, we're under 100 or so. We have uh, maybe 50 or so students that uh, registered again. They're registered. They're, they uh, identified themselves uh, who would be able to take, it, uh, uh, take advantage of these evacuation chairs. <clears throat> I also point out that in, uh, in just in the last few weeks, we had uh, 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 an alert uh, that required evacuation of the campus, and we had the terrible uh, storm. Uh, from Sandy that also uh, at some point required uh, leaving. We, uh, and there's always snow in New England, uh, so that uh, sometimes they don't always come uh, after school hours, those snowstorms. So uh, uh, help with evacuation uh, is uh, something that we, uh, you know, we just take very seriously here. Uh, uh, after, shortly after my arrival, uh, it was the 9-11 you know, uh, tragedy. Uh, and that demonstrated, as we tried to evacuate uh, the campus, uh, uh, it demonstrated to me uh, uh, very forcefully how we needed to expand our services and to expedite uh, the so-called evacuation uh, 
uh, emergency evacuation. It, it, it was uh, far too time consuming for my, uh, for my uh, good you know, feeling and, uh, and others felt that same way. Any other questions? <clears throat> okay, well, I thank you. I th again, I thank the commission. We're very grateful. And uh, it was wonderful for William Fontaine to be uh, joining us and other members of the commission, as well as Vice Chair um, uh, Dennis Balselli. Uh, let's move, if we could, to adjourn to the uh, lo uh, lobby area where our uh, BCC uh, police uh, uh, officers will demonstrate uh, the, the effectiveness of, this, uh, of these evacuation chairs. Thank you very much for coming. Welcome, everyone. My name is Wayne Wood. I'm the Director of Public Safety here. Uh, Officer Dave Mello, Officer Matt Engstrom, and our dispatcher, Justin Finn, is going to demonstrate the chair. Uh, as you know, we have the chairs usually in a lockbox in the corner, okay? So every officer has a key. Once we have an emergency response team in every building, they will have a key. So they'll open the door, open the box. Okay, I had all arrangements with my dispatcher not to put an officer in the back also front and back, but with a special guest, I'm going to have an officer on both in the front and the back. I want to show you how easy it was. Matt, make sure you stay in the front. On the side, though, so everybody can see it. You know, it's not an issue. You strap them in, so make sure they don't panic and get their arms all over the place and all that. It's on a track, so once it gets reaches over, you'll incline it, bring it down. And oh, wait, it holds like a thousand pounds, right? It's three hundred pounds, the minimum, oh, or the maximum. Ma oh, the maximum. On this chair, put that. One person, obviously, can handle it, no problem. Of course, for safety, we'll have somebody on, you know, in the front. But if guys, they can win this. It's an emergency stop. All right, David, raise your hands, lean it on. No matter how heavy the person is, they'll be there. We've done this in other buildings where it's not just straight line too, where we can do big diagonal turns and it's no problem. Not that it's no problem, but it's, it's, it, it, can, it can be done. Okay, David, are you at that point? Just like that. You can just put it up with an angle, just wheel the person right out to safety. Wow. Excellent. Anybody want to try it? <laughs> You're on camera. Anybody that's willing to try it that's never tried it before, I feel so comfortable with it that I think anybody can handle it. Uh,